There's nothing quite like a fresh bean from the garden. I'm here in my community garden plot in the Browns Edition neighborhood of Spokane, enjoying some of the final fruits of a long summer growing season. But when I'm done with my vegetable, I still have a little waste. Normally we throw away our waste, where it goes to an incinerator or a landfill, but organic waste, things that will rot, are different. They don't burn well, and they don't do well in a landfill either. So I'm curious, how else can I deal with my organic waste when I'm done with my food? To learn more, I visited the Shadle Library, where I found a copy of Compost 2 by Mary McKenna Siddles with pictures by Ashley Wolf. It lists more than 20 items that can be composted, including fruit scraps, coffee filters, and even shredded paper. The book shows how these items can be mixed together, kept moist, and turned into a dirt-like material called compost. I want to see this in person, so let's go visit a master composter volunteer to learn more. Hi Laren, thank you for having us at your home. I'm curious about compost. I want to learn more about what it is. So these are your compost bins. I see some dead pine needles, some grass shavings, and maybe some scraps from your kitchen. Can you explain to me what compost is and what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is I've mixed these in the proper ratio and started them with water and the piles have all kinds of bacteria and different types of fungi in there and all kinds of little microscopic creatures and what they're doing is they're eating this material and making it into smaller particles but then they're also pooping it out oh wow i know and so it makes this soil amendment that looks a lot like soil when it's done Okay, a few things I want to understand a little bit better. You said you wanted to keep it wet. Why are you keeping it wet? These are living organisms. And just like us, they need something to eat. They need some place to live, which is the pile. But they also need air and water. Oh, so compost isn't just rotting in the sense that maybe an apple would rot if we left it on the counter forever. There are actual organisms like different fungi and mm -hmm. bacteria mm -hmm. that are working to make this compost mm -hmm. go from what we see here, scraps, pine right. needles, to soil. Right. That is amazing. It sounds like magic. It is. And you've got all these little critters. You've got worms. So it is magic. It takes it's a just, whole team. Yeah, it's scientific magic. This is so fascinating. It, it's really fun to watch. Laren showed us what compost looks like at home. But not everybody has the time or space to take care of a compost pile. Here in the community garden, I put my food scraps into a clean green bin. These are available throughout the city of Spokane. These clean green bins are then taken to a large compost facility where all of the waste is turned into compost. Let's go take a trip to see what compost looks like on a large scale. Scott, thank you for having us here at Bartech. Can you tell us a little bit about what goes on here? Yes, thanks for coming, Mason. Yeah, I'm the general manager of Bartech Compost Facility, and essentially we take all the organic waste from the city and the county, regional city and county in the Spokane region. So all of that organic waste comes out here. We put it through a six month process and then make a finished compost that we use as a soil amendment from there at the end of the process. You take waste from the Spokane area and you compost it. Can you show us how that happens? Absolutely. Well, let's go take a look. Okay. This here is actually from the city of Spokane, uh, from the green bins that okay. the city of Spokane picks up. Uh -huh. All of that material would have been in a green bin. This material here, we basically put it through the time and temperature regimen that we need to, and then on the asphalt over there. And then we're required by regulation to maintain certain temperatures for a certain length of time for pathogen destruction. And then we have to test it for heavy metals and all the contaminants that potentially cause issues. It's actually a 45 day process, about a 42 day process. So it's in primary aeration for 14 days, 
we then move it to a secondary aeration process for another 14 days. Then we bring it over to this area just on the other side of that tank and that's a curing area so it's curing for another 14 days at which time we send all the, the samples to the lab make sure it's met all the regulatory criteria at which point we can say okay yeah that's finished compost and then we take it out to the pre-screen areas where it'll set out there for another two or three months okay. so essentially what the cycle is what we bring in are two incoming seasons are in the spring and in the fall so what we bring in in the in the spring we typically will ship out as finished compost in the fall and then what we bring in in the fall will go out the next spring as compost so it's about a six month from start to finish process scott thank you so much for showing us how compost works here at bartag all right well thanks for coming mason it's always a pleasure I'm so glad our community has educators like Laren and the master composters and Scott at Bartek who are taking care of our planet, ensuring we have healthy soils and gardens. Knowing a little bit more about compost inspires me to be a little bit more careful with my food waste. To learn more about compost, check out books like Compost 2 from the Spokane Public Library at spokanelibrary.org. Thanks for exploring Spokane with me today. We'll see you later. The world's so big and the options are